Is there a thing that you want to like, but don't? You know, something popular that everybody seems to enjoy, but try as you might, you can't. The beach, for example. You're not wrong if you don't love the thing that everybody else is pretending to love. The beach sucks with kids. I don't like sand. Well, we're now into phase five, and a lot of people can't put their finger on exactly why they're just not feeling these new characters. In short, it's because they aren't characters. They are a set of familiar powers transposed onto a new body that we don't know anything about. These new characters are the LaCroix of the hero world. I've heard it described that drinking LaCroix is like sipping carbonated water while somebody shouts the name of a flavor in the next room. LaCroix tastes like it was created by someone who didn't want to admit he'd never tasted fruit, so had a friend quickly describe it to him. LaCroix tastes like someone ate a fruit salad and burped into a water bottle. The new Marvel is giving us sparkling characters in a can with a label that suggests there should be a flavor. It's, it's just so clear that the people writing these new phases don't get what we loved about the first three. It's mostly RDJ. Eponine, how do we feel about the MCU without Tony Stark? Without him, the world around me changes. I know you miss him, we all do. I wasn't entirely sure why I was feeling this way until I discovered that recently fired Victoria Alonso is the ultimate architect of this mantle method. Apparently it was her idea to simply transfer the mantle of power from one character to the next and think that we, the audience, would just roll right along with it. We were Vic rolled. Like and subscribe. If you're wondering why you don't feel the same way about female Hawkeye, female Hulk, female Thor, comedy Thor, female Iron Man, or blacked in America, the same way you did for those original Avengers, it's because the folks at Marvel didn't think you needed to connect with a character on a personal level, you just care about their cool powers. I think these new heroes should be called the Averagers. That wasn't my best. I'm gonna, I'm gonna workshop that. You'll notice I left out Yelena, that's because there's hope for her, but I'll get to that later. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool, and fuck you, I'm out. When the MCU first started, it was completely character-based. How will Tony react to the knowledge that he was secretly selling weapons to terrorists? What will he do with this new power and responsibility? How will Steve adapt to the future? Is this even the same America he once fought for? How will Bruce overcome his fear and hatred of himself to work with the team? Seeing these characters respond to their power and the responsibility and danger that it held is why the MCU was a hit. It carried universal themes of heroism, and sacrifice. Like, the bad guys were never anything to write home about, but as the series progressed, we saw the heroes react to the challenges of the universe and how that affected each one and the team dynamic as a whole. It was about people, and those people had powers that they used. Now, it's just the powers, and the people can change whenever the script calls for it. It's also why the powers and the enemies have to keep getting bigger. Once the human element is gone, all you have left is spectacle, and we quickly adapt to spectacle. We need it to keep getting larger or we get bored. That's what she said. So now the universe isn't in danger, the, the entire, entire multiverse, multiverse is, is in danger. danger. But that's gonna get boring because nobody really cares about the universe. They care about the people in it. And the MCU doesn't have any people left, they just have tokens. It also proves that the people who said this was all a PR stunt were absolutely correct. The reason these characters feel like diversity hires is because they are. Their personality doesn't matter. The only thing that matters are the powers and their skin color and genitals so some DEI quotas can get filled. Let's take a look at my favorite, Blacked in America. I call him this because he is no longer Sam Wilson. He is no longer the Falcon. He is now Black Steve Jr. and he will never have his own identity again. They will never let a black man be Captain America. The only thing you know about this character is that he's black. I, I'm a black man carrying the stars and stripes. The entire show is about his blackness. Well, half the show. The other half is about him accepting the reality that he will be living under Steve Rogers' shadow forever. He appears sad in some scenes, and that is because he is mourning the death of his own identity. His new identity is the black guy that Marvel knows. They bring him up in conversation whenever somebody mentions racism. You gotta do better. He is now the shield and the shield has no name. There used to be this guy named Steve Rogers who would fight evil under the name of Captain America. Steve had to wrestle with being Cap and what that meant to his world. The character Steve responded to the power and responsibility of the shield. Now the shield is all that remains. Goodbye, Sam. 
Hello, Blacked in America. You know, the really ironic thing about erasing Sam and just making him all about the suit mantle is that it can be passed on whenever he's no longer useful or wanted. Disney made a black man into a tool to be used for PR, and then that power can be passed on whenever a new box needs to be checked. We could dig deeper. We could say the black man never even had his own power. He had to be helped by White Steve endorsing him with the shield. Don't think about any of that stuff. Representation! This is also shallow. They just think they can take an old established character, swap them out for a woman or a black character, and that's appealing to that audience. I think it's understandable if black people are not exactly empowered and excited by the cardboard cutout marketing ploy that is Steve Rogers' sloppy seconds. They have no idea why nobody likes blacks and black men as much as Steve Rogers. It's like those medieval painters who clearly had never seen the thing they were supposed to be painting and they were just going based off of somebody's description. So this picture needs a baby. You've seen a baby, right? Of course I've seen a baby baby before. So we need a picture with a horse. You've seen a horse, yeah? Obviously I've seen a horse before. Queen loves cats. She wants a lot of cats in this painting. You've seen a cat before, haven't you? <laughs> How dare you, sir? Obviously I have seen a cat. Multiple cats, in fact. Another issue with using the mantle and previous characters is that Marvel didn't feel the need to give these new characters any backstory, or any story, really. No motivation, no hopes, fears, biases, nothing that makes a character. They just use their powers to beat the bad guy. And there's already been a long-standing criticism of Marvel villains, so we won't get into that here. Who could illustrate this better than She-Hulk? Her backstory is non-existent. She wants to get ahead at work, so she is able to... You know, we never really fleshed that out. This is the nightmare end goal that modern feminism doesn't like to talk about, by the way. Go to work, ladies. Show those men who's boss. But why? What is the point? Have you ever met a guy whose only goal in life is to be successful, even though he can't articulate what that phrase means to him? These are the most miserable people you will ever meet. They have a poster of Gordon Gecko on their wall like it's from freaking Tiger Beat, and they've never questioned what it's all for. That's what American Psycho and Fight Club were about and a lot of guys missed the point. Anyway, Jen Walters is climbing the corporate law firm ladder, but she's being held back by men. That's her entire backstory. We also find out in the first episode that she is better than Bruce in every way, which we, the audience, have a history with. The writers figure that having her eat Cheetos with chopsticks next to Bruce, who is a genius with multiple PhDs, who made time travel work, sort of, the writers figured that would send us the signal that she is just as good, if not better. But just to be sure we got it, they wrote her some lines explicitly saying, I'm better than you. Later on, she lectures him about how hard her life is. This was all in the first episode. It was about as subtle as a Peterbilt. This is a disservice to both characters. One, it's a hilarious insult to Bruce, who we know all about. We know that he has attempted suicide. He's been hunted by the government. He was abused as a child. He was locked inside of his alter ego and made to fight for sport. He's programmed with the most tragic backstory ever. We have seen the self-loathing and depression that he deals with. So watching a new character tell him cat calls are worse than all that and see no rebuke on screen was so absurd it was funny. But it was also a disservice to the character that Jen Walters could have been. By anchoring her character to Bruce and using him as the yardstick, she will never escape him. They thought they were making her superior, but ironically measured her against him right from the start. So now we have a character with no story to speak of and powers that we've already seen. She-Hulk was not a new or interesting take on the Hulk formula, it wasn't even really a female copy, which would have been better than what the show ended up being. Because Marvel believed that they could just pass the power mantle and 99% of the character is already written, we got a bland, lifeless Jen Walters that had nothing in common with 99% of the audience. Much like Black in America, it's understandable if women are more than a little insulted about this blatant pink washing of a character with no effort given to likability, character development, anything. This is the writing equivalent of Bic making pink pens for her. When Gillette made the exact same razor, but pink for ladies. I want to stress this point. It is not just that they unironically made her the stereotypical, unlikable, man-hating feminist. That is not why the show is bad. That part is pretty humorous, honestly, that they read the room so poorly. The show is bad because Jen Walters never has any interesting interaction with her powers because she was never interesting to begin with. Simply adding Hulk powers to a character that is the anthropomorphic equivalent to the color beige doesn't suddenly make them 
interesting. Another example of this is Kate Bishop. Of all the replacement heroes, people seem to tolerate her the best. Honestly, it's a pretty low bar to get over. I think she's extremely forgettable, so much so I keep forgetting her name. I am not joking. The writers did something for her that nobody else got though. She did have a character arc. Trouble is, her arc was wanting to be like Hawkeye. Not only is her story completely based on wanting to be another character, it's the least cared about character in the entire MCU. I'm still editing, I'm gonna make a poll. Who do you care about more, Clint or the rock guy from Thor? You know, lawyers have this saying about not asking a question you don't already know the answer to, and this is what happens when you go off script and think you're making a funny joke. Probably shouldn't have put Clint up against a character that people didn't even know had a name. That's on me, I set the bar too low. My point still stands. Clint is not anybody's favorite Avenger. All right, that's the point I was making. God. Poor Clint has been getting clowned on since the beginning. This guy has a nuclear reactor in his chest. This guy is a literal god. This guy is an indestructible giant monster. And Clint, he's got a bow and arrow. They didn't even try to give him quips. He's just there on a high perch. Kate will never escape from Clint. She is so much a generic gender swapped version of him that her entire story is about wanting to be him. She will never have a character and Marvel doesn't think she needs to. They passed on the mantle. Isn't that good enough? Like most things Disney, they don't seem to be getting the point. I thought Iger was onto something when I saw a headline about him saying the MCU needed new characters. I was quickly disappointed when I saw that he was talking about these new Avengers, which are hollow shells wearing the suits of their former owners. We know Thor is basically dead at this point. Lady Thor is actually dead and comedy Thor suffered death by a thousand jokes. Ironheart is still coming though in 2024 now as Marvel panics and tries to put out the fires. It's funny, they know something is wrong, but they don't know what. The final Avengers copy, Yelena, will be seen in next year's Thunderbolts if it releases at all. These are the new characters that Iger was talking about. Old characters with new skins like a Fortnite player. Yelena and the Thunderbolts movie are the only ones I have any hope for at this point. She is a fun character and Marvel is giving her the story that Black Widow never got. <laughs> the Black Widow movie should have just been called Rise of Yelena because Natasha spent the entire runtime handing over the electric baton. But Yelena's got that RDJ factor. She's fun and snarky, yet capable and with a good heart. She's well written and it doesn't hurt that Florence Pugh is just a darn good actress. I also wanna be hopeful for the Thunderbolts in general, or at least half the team. I think MCU is gonna drop the ball, the plot is gonna be utter garbage, but this movie has two big things going for it. One, it's MCU Suicide Squad, and the real Suicide Squad sucked so hard, Hoover's everywhere died of jealousy. The bar is underground, so Thunderbolts is gonna look good by comparison. The second reason it might do well is because half the cast is great. Yelena is quickly becoming a fan favorite. She should be the face of the MCU, not Captain Marvel, Kevin, you idiot. But backing her up is gonna be Dave David Harbour as the lovable Red Guardian and Winter Soldier Sebastian Stan, who has a jawline so straight some men are wondering if they are. The other three need to have as little screen time as possible. And you? I'll be in my bedroom, making no noise and pretending that I don't exist. This movie has characters people care about and they will pay money to see, unlike the Marvels, and I discuss that here. If Thunderbolts fails, it'll be Marvel snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Marvel is not just passing the power mantle among the Avengers. They really think the power is the character and the upcoming The Marvels is gonna show that as well. The entire plot is just about their powers interacting and the body swapping thing. I cannot imagine a better allegory for Marvel's current approach to characters than having a movie where, this, where the characters just swap interchangeably. <laughs> I already discussed why nobody's gonna care about this movie and we'll probably do a third one as more of the plot gets revealed. But now, what are your thoughts on the Alonzo mantle method and do you think things are gonna change now that she's fired? I appreciate you watching as always and I'll see you next time.